Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and this second video in my Router Template series. Three videos in all. One's already been published, which was the basics. And now we're going to look at how to make templates with normal tools in a workshop. The third video, which will eventually follow this one, will be how to make templates using a CNC machine. Let's have a look at the kit we need. Now, we will need, of course, the router, uh, the star of the show almost, and you will recall from the first video that I was using the UJK uh, threaded guide set. Now, I mentioned in that video that there was a chance of the buildup of dust on the guide as one's using it. So I've now modified three of these guide bushes, and they're the three with the smallest diameter holes. And the problem was that there wasn't enough aperture here, bearing in mind there is also a router cutter sticking out, there wasn't enough space here for the dust to be sucked up by the vacuum machine. So I've drilled a series of holes around here to improve things. And I've only done it with the three smallest sizes. That's the 10, 12 and 14 millimeter ones. Beyond there, one's getting a little bit more space for the dust to be sucked up. And I've also drilled some holes in my guide bush holder. And if you remember, this is the Lee uh, Jig 704R, which fits my uh, Festool OF1010 router. And so I've drilled some holes in here, again, to improve the airflow a little bit. The same as last time, I've got my range of seven metric size cutters from Trend, and they go from four up to 12 millimeters, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10 and 12. And that gives me quite a bit of flexibility together with the eight guide bushes that I've got that go from 10 to 30 millimeters. I've got my crib sheet, which I've made up, which tells me offsets for various combinations of guide and router cutter. Now, a while ago, I did something about FAMAG drills. And after a lot of deliberation and the, the fact that we were in lockdown, we didn't know what was going on, um, I bit the bullet and I've now got a most superb set. Now, it's difficult to find this in the UK. Uh, you can find them in Germany. Um, but if you go, if you need a special order, go to Roland Tools here in the UK. Now, this set goes from 10 up to 50 millimetres. And the sizes go 10, 12, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25, 26, 28, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. Now, with that range of cutter sizes, you'll see how important this is in a minute. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility when you're creating templates because whereas before we were only worried about cutter size and guide bush size, now into the mix goes the size of the holes that you can drill in templates that you're going to make by hand. Now that's a bit of a luxury but I had a big birthday this year and somebody in this house thinks I'm worth it. <laughs> Now, in this video, measuring and marking is going to be really important. So I've got various measuring tools. This is the most brilliant uh, precision T-rule. It's made by Incra, uh, and I got it from the Woodworkers Workshop quite a long time ago. And I've got a larger version, but I think I probably only need this one uh, for this video. Um, I've got digital caliper here. I've got the trend uh, depth gauge. Uh, which I've used a few times when setting up for router cuts. And with my router, I've got the mandrel, probably going to need a chisel or two, a few other hand tools, double-sided tape, and uh, maybe the odd six-inch nail. I'm not sure yet. Now, I really feel a little bit embarrassed because in the very first video, I should really have pointed out just how useful the Festool MFT3 is for holding things when you're doing jig work with a router or whatever. Uh, it really is. All those holes, you can get all sorts of combinations of clamps going in and holding things in place. It's really good. So <laughs> I've remembered and you've got it in the second video. Now, in the first video, we looked at a method of creating a hole and a plug to go in it. And this is that uh, one used in that video. And circular templates are actually pretty easy to make. Uh, you can either uh, buy them very easily 
or you can make them by drilling a hole in something. So I'm not going to do anything round. Now, when I'm marking out to drill for template work, uh, particularly with the Forstner bit where you've got that little spike in the middle, uh, what I do is I, I draw my uh, lines which mark where the centres of my holes are going to go, and then I use a braddle. <laughs> this actually is... Uh, in need of a little bit of a sharpen up. But anyway, I use a braddle just to define uh, where the point of the Forstner bit should follow. And it just does help to get a little bit of extra accuracy. So I've now marked uh, the four uh, centres of the next bit of drilling I'm going to do. And I hope you can now see how easy it is to line this up so that I'm going to put these holes in the right place. And if you go to the stage where you're not actually drilling, but the point of the Forstner is just there, you can do a little wiggle, and you can then feel you're in the absolute right place. So there are those four holes, and uh, I'm pretty certain those are fairly accurately defined by that braddle mark. Now, I have uh, done some in intermediate holes. Um, the corners define the corners of my template, but the intermediate holes are just to make it easier to remove the piece in the middle. Now, when doing this, I find it's quite useful. You want to stay on the inside so that you actually finish off this line with a chisel. And so I've got a pencil line which marks the centers for the corner holes, and I can now dip the uh, drill down. I can see where its point is. I move it just a little bit. Yep, I'm still within my line, I'm still within my line, and when I'm happy, I can drill. And I know that that hole I've just drilled, the edge of it is within uh, the uh, outline that I'm trying to create. And that's fine. So I can now take out this middle section and tidy up the sides with the chisel. Now, in a similar way to doing that braddle point to make it easier for the uh, Forstners uh, to go in, uh, you can use a craft knife to score a line where you want the chisel to do its work. And so there's one line there, another line just there. And because this is a template, it doesn't matter if you go all the way across like that, uh, because, uh, you know, it just, it's a template. It doesn't matter. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have a template uh, right at the edge of a piece of material like this. I'd try and get it uh, closer to the center so you've got more clamping options. But I want to use this piece again and again. Now, I've finished it off as well as I need to because I won't be using this as a real template. But I do need to show you something about the radii of the corners of templates. Now with a circular template, uh, you can use virtually any size uh, guide bush you like, as long as it fits into the circle. Uh, so that's not really a, a problem. But if you have a rectangular template and it's got corners, and in my case I've got slightly rounded corners, but just supposing you made one with square corners, uh, this will also apply to that. Incidentally, these holes I drilled uh, to make this template are 15 millimetres in diameter, that's 10 millimetres. So if I put my pencil in here, and I now f do my best to follow this round on the piece of paper, it's, it's not terribly scientific, this, but I hope you can see uh, that you end up with nice rounded corners. If you were to use a guide bush which had a diameter greater than the corner, and this applies to any guide if that is a square corner, but if it's not a square corner, if the guide radius is greater than the radius of that corner, things start to go wrong. Now, in order to keep my pencil in a steady position, this is one of the three millimeter uh, drill guides from the path guide system. So forgive me, I'm not trying to produce a, an advert for that product, but I'm just trying to use this to show you what happens it's not terribly clever, but I hope you can see that what you end up is a right-angled right -angled rectangle. So there's no account has been taken of the curvature of the corner. So therefore the rule is that if you 
have a template, its corners must have a radius which is greater than the radius of any guide bush you're going to use. And bearing in mind, sometimes you might be using two uh, guide bushes in the same template uh, toward, in order to achieve something particular. So always remember, you can't have a square corner. And if, if you do have the proper round, rounded part, the radius of any part of that uh, corner uh, must be greater than the radius of the guide that you're using. And this even applies if you're creating a template that looks like this, this teardrop. There's the template. Well, you look for the place where there's the tightest bit here. So the actual radius down at this end is such that you, whatever guide bush you use here, it must be smaller than the radius of that tight corner. Now, let me just explain the process that we go through when we want to copy an object, perhaps something that looks a little bit like this. The very first thing to do is to measure it. We need to know its length and its width. And I'm assuming that the ends of this object are perfectly round. Now, in our case, uh, the object is 22 millimetres wide and it's 50 six millimeters long. Now the template has to be made taking account of the available drills, those are the Forstner drills we use to drill these rounded bits, and also the, the offset table uh, that you've seen in the previous video. The offset table allows us to establish for a given offset what range of cutters, there might be only one or two, uh, and what range of guide bushes, again, there might be only one or two, uh, suit that particular offset. Now, in this particular example, uh, the radius of the drill has to be 22 millimetres plus whatever offset we choose. Now, I should just point out that the centre between the two holes that we have to drill in the template is the same distance as that between the centres of the curved portions of the object we're copying. And in our case, that is 34 millimetres. So I, I used the table and looked at my available Forstner bits. And so I've chosen a 40 millimetre drill, which then requires a 9 millimetre offset, because 40 minus 2 times 9 is 22. And that was the diameter across those original holes there. With that, I need an offset of 9mm, and from the table, I've chosen a 6mm cutter and a 24mm guide. Now, just jumping forward a bit, if you've actually created your template and you want to now produce something exactly the same size as the object that you were producing the template for, then all you do is you look at the plug table and look for, in this case, a 9 millimeter offset. And with a nine millimeter offset you can choose from the plug table the appropriate cutter and guide bush so that you can then produce little objects the same size as that. Now I've, I've used the method to create this template and what I did was I marked two centers which were 34 millimeters apart and I then drilled through those centers with a 40 millimeter forced in a bit. I then tidied it up. So I've now created uh, a, a template that shape. My idea now is that I'm going to use this to demonstrate how to cut a plug. In other words, the bit we want is the bit in the middle. I've just changed my guide bush in here and I've now got to recenter it. Now you mustn't think that this is a chore because this is all part of making sure that everything is really accurate. And once the mandrel's held firmly, I can then bring this up, press down on my thumb, and then tighten up. If you miss this step out and end up with something that doesn't fit properly, you only have yourself to blame. So that's that done. I can now remove the mandrel and put in the cutter that I need. I'm all set up to do this cut now. My template is held in place over the piece of wood I'm going to be doing the cutting from. The, because this is a plug, uh, the piece in the middle is held down with double-sided 
tape so it doesn't move at the very end of the cut. I've set my depth of the router and I'm all ready to go. Ear defenders on. And remember, because this is a plug, we're going to follow the outside of the template and we're going to make sure we don't stray into the middle at all. Well, there that is. That was really good. My double-sided tape was on much better than the previous time, so I'm very pleased with that. I'll take my clamps off, my template away. You can see double-sided sellotape did a good job. There's my plug in the middle. Now what I've got to do is get that off the uh, double-sided tape. There it is. So that's a neat little plug. I'm very pleased with that. Now I have previously created this template, which allowed me to create this hole. And my calculation with the bit of work that I've just done was that this plug would fit in this hole. Doing my best to get this to fit. Yep. Okay, right, now that's in there. Now bearing in mind there were two operations by hand. One to create this template where I was uh, doing everything by hand and the other to create this template. And there's the quality of the fit. You can see it's just a slight gap here. Now if this was a, a repair you were doing in a piece of wood uh, you could theoretically use a little bit of filler or something there but at least it gives you an idea of what you could achieve. But that, in a sense, is the worst case because I've used two separate handmade templates, one to create the hole and one to create the plug. If we're able to use the same template to create both, then we really are onto a winner. Now I've got my table here and I'm now going to have a look at this single template which I've used to make the plug to now make the hole and to see if it's any more accurate. And according to my table, in order to get that offset, which was actually nine for, for this particular uh, operation to create that plug, I'm now looking in the part of the table which is a female pattern to create a hole. And, and I can see from this with a six millimeter cutter, I need a 24 millimeter guide bush. So all I've got to do is change the guide bush. Now just a word of caution, whenever you're going to make changes to your router, unplug it. Please always remember that. So I'm now going to change that uh, guide bush and then refit the cutter. Now I'm going to cut uh, the new hole that this plug is going to fit into from the same piece of wood. Now admittedly this came from there but the, there's a sort of repeating pattern. If you're trying to match grain between the plug and the hole, then put the plug on top, put it where you think it'll be a reasonable match, and that, that's not exact, but it's a sort of match, and then take your template and place it over there so that the plug, which is just sitting there quietly, is central. And that then should give you a reasonable chance of getting something to match. Happy with that, I've got it clamped down on there so I can now do my cut. Now unfortunately I, my piece of wood that I was cutting the hole in uh, moved very very slightly whilst I was doing it. I hadn't clamped it carefully enough but I want to show you this because uh, you too might make the same mistake. So what's happened is uh, there was a little bit of movement in this piece of wood and you can see now I've got a little bit of gap in a couple of places. Uh, now I wouldn't accept that as being a good enough job if it was for a piece of furniture uh, but uh, at least it illustrates the way of going about it. Now this is what I, I did earlier and this is one of those little plastic uh, gadgets that you use for fixing things on walls and so on. Uh, and you can see that with a little bit of care, you can get this to be perfect. Now in my final video, which is going to take a long time to do because I've got a lot of other stuff to do before then, is showing you a CNC approach to making templates. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.